<clears throat> so uh, we saw that in the previous podcast that uh, the recovery funds uh, after the COVID uh, disaster uh, is not going as well for climate action as it could in terms of green recovery funds. And then but the COVID uh, pandemic is still not over. But in the meantime, Russia decided or Putin decided that uh, it was a good time to invade Ukraine based on some uh, premises. Uh, obviously, the energy security issues have uh, come up very strongly again with countries trying to decide how to protect against uh, price changes, supply changes of oil, and so on and so forth. Uh, fortunately, there are also maybe ways to use this as a way to uh, kickstart uh, climate action and uh, head towards uh, net zero goals as opposed to the uh, not so smart actions uh, in the uh, recovery f uh, funding of uh, post-COVID. Uh, how does it work? Uh, the International Energy Agency has an emergency response team which provides scenarios and it provides ways in which oil consumptions can be consumption in advanced economies can be reduced in the last four months in response to uh, the Ukraine war. So here we are looking at uh, US dollars uh, spent uh, average monthly expenditures by households for oil products in uh, advanced economies. So going from January 21 to March 22, you have the heating which obviously goes up during the cooler winter months. You can see here during the summer it disappears but then mobility has uh, an impact. The climate has an impact on mobility as well. So you can see that there is maybe an overall trend but without worrying about that um, Oil demand reductions in advanced economies within four months uh, can be done according to this 10-point plan provided by IEA. So this is uh, the 10-point plan looking at millions of barrels per day. Uh, the current levels are here uh, just over 44 and it's uh, offering a plan, a 10-point plan. Uh, and to bring the oil demand down in four months by uh, a couple of million uh, barrels per day. Okay, so it includes, uh, we'll look at the details in a minute, uh, reduce speed limits on highways because that uh, increases uh, fuel consumption because of the you go beyond the optimal emission, uh, efficiency of the vehicles, mostly uh, ICEs or internal combustion engines. Work from home up to three days, uh, which uh, the pandemic enforced already, and we have seen the impact on emissions reductions during uh, the pandemic. Car-free Sundays in the cities, public transportation, walking and cycling, uh, alternate car access to roads in cities, increase, uh, increase car sharing and reduce fuel use, promote efficient driving for trucks, use existing uh, HSR and night trains, uh, reduce business flights and electric vehicles and more efficient uh, vehicles, right? So obviously, uh, the emergency response uh, team has looked at uh, reducing demand and increasing supply. So here fuel switching, temporarily replacing oil use with other energy sources and demand restraint can also affect uh, demand and reduce it. So you can use heavy handed approaches of uh, putting quick uh, constraints on how much people can drive or how much fuel they can buy or you can have a medium level restraint and light handed restraint. For increasing supply you can also have production surge but as you just saw probably Houthis have attacked an Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabian uh, oil facility so Saudi Arabia is uh, already indicating uh, supply may reduce. Uh, and this could increase in, uh, and there could be increased indigenous production as well and as you saw US approached Venezuela which it hadn't been communicating with for a while for good reason and uh, has tried to 
take oil from there and then there is uh, increasing supply by stock draw so for industry and public so it can be agency or government and so on so this is a good example or a metaphor of how a uh, an event that is unfortunate and dangerous can actually drive climate action and act as a trigger whereas the pandemic uh, on the other hand uh, gave us an example of how we may not be as um, careful as we should be about always pushing climate action even when economies have to recover and so on okay so the 10 point uh, action plan to cut oil use in a bit more detail immediate actions in advanced economies can cut oil demand by 2.7 million barrels a day in the next four months so that's a fairly significant fraction of the 44 million barrels per day that uh, they are using uh, so reduce speed limits on highways by at least 10 km per hour which saves around 219 uh, kilo barrels per day thousands of barrels of oil use from cars and additional 140 kilo barrels per day from trucks uh, work from home up to three days a week where uh, where possible and the impact would be that one day a week saves around 170 kilo barrels per day three days saves around 500 kilo barrels per day uh, car free Sundays every Sunday saves around 380 kilobarrels per day one Sunday a month saves 95 kilobarrels a day make use of public transport cheaper in, and uh, incentivize sorry make the use of public transport cheaper and incentivize micro mobility like walking and cycling plus a uh, small distance uh, driving if at all that would save around 330 thousand barrels per day uh, alternate private car access to road uh, roads in large cities uh, could save around 210,000 barrels per day increasing car sharing and adopting practices to reduce fuel use, uh, use can save 470,000 uh, barrels per day promote efficient driving for freight trucks and delivery of goods uh, saves around 320 thousand barrels per day but this again uh, is already going to uh, maybe add a little bit to the uh, food price surge that is happening and is expected to worsen as the war continues uh, because of the uh, uh, impact on uh, supply chains and the funny roles that some countries are playing in supporting Russia and so on uh, using high speed and night trains instead of planes where possible can save 40,000 barrels per day. Uh, avoid business air travel where alternative options exist saves around 260,000 barrels per day. These are again options that are on the table and whether it, they can be enforced or voluntarily adopted uh, is of course a big issue and that goes back to how we respond. Uh, in terms of behavioral changes uh, even when there are such issues of increasing food prices uh, increasing fuel prices uh, and so on reinforce the adoption of electric and more efficient vehicles can save around 100,000 kilobarrels per day 100,000 barrels per day again this is a matter of access and uh, uh, affordability and so on okay so this gives you an a example of how a bad situation like the invasion of Ukraine by Russia will have global consequences of uh, in terms of economies uh, food prices fuel prices inflation uh, and so on of course me, uh, large numbers of people dying infrastructure getting destroyed and so on in Ukraine as well and all the military spending which typically includes large emissions increase as well but can this event then drive a motivation or create a motivation to reduce fuel use in advanced economies which can uh, be done mostly with no regret decisions like uh, no car Sundays driving less working from home uh, and driving more efficient vehicles or EVs and so on and so forth pandemic offers one example and the Ukraine invasion uh, of offers one example uh, unforeseen events that are affecting not only um, 
life and uh, poverty and economies and so on, but also are uh, shedding light on how climate action must continue through all eventualities if we want to stay on target for net zero or uh, and uh, the uh, global warming targets like less than 2 degrees C by 2100 or less than 1.5 degrees C by 2100 with 67 percent probability. So this really tests our collective resolves and political will to keep uh, climate action on the front burner no matter what happens, no matter what else happens in addition to the climate impacts that are already going on. Okay.